Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good. Welcome to the City of Lebanon Board of Zoning Appeals meeting for Monday, March the 7th. We have roll call, please. Mark Vanneman. Here. Chad Kiger. Here. Bruce Polly. Here. Ron Edwards. Here. And Lori Gross. Here. Okay, hey, we've got everybody here tonight. Approval minutes. We have a. Somebody. I make a motion we approve the minutes as written. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Kelly, I think Chad was the second. Chad, okay. Okay, uh, we'll get started here. A couple comments. This is a open meeting, so anybody that wants to speak will have a chance to speak. I'd like everybody to hold their comments to three minutes and try not to repeat what somebody else has said, if at all possible. Our first item tonight is docket 22-9, Scott Land. The property is located at 1407 Park, Park Drive here in Lebanon. Property is zoned single family residential and comprised of approximately 0 0.20 acres. The subject lot configuration varies from 72 feet wide along the street frontage down to 54, street, 54 feet wide on the rear of the property and is approximately 140 feet deep. Matt, would you take over? Sure. Good evening, board. Thanks for everybody being here tonight. We've got a packed house and a nice full agenda, so we should uh, have some fun this evening. Uh, tonight, uh, this application shouldn't uh, look very uh, unique to you guys, simply because it's something that we saw just last year in the same neighborhood. Um, we're, we're talking about a, a neighborhood in town that um, was built uh, back in the, the probably the early 40s and 50s and wasn't designed for garages. So when we have homeowners that uh, want to upgrade their, their properties and, and add a garage and add living space, what we find is the houses were built meeting all of the setbacks, setback requirements, but these additions and to add an actual garage aren't going to meet those setbacks. So what you have before you tonight, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Bruce, uh, we have a, a lot with a lot configuration that uh, uh, in geometry really just doesn't work to add a, an addition to this. So I'll zoom in a little bit on the image here. And you can see, so we've got, we've got the home that does meet the, the current setbacks. Uh, the property owner is proposing an addition on the south side uh, and to the rear of the property. And I'll pull up the rendering here that was provided as part of the application. And you can see here that because of the configuration of the property that the proposed structure does meet the setback towards the front of the garage, but as you move towards the rear, uh, gets into the uh, three to three and a half foot range instead of the required seven and a half feet uh, based on our UDO. So what we're here before you tonight is to ask uh, your approval to allow this proposed addition to encroach upon the seven and a half foot setback uh, to an approximate three to three feet six inch setback just on that rear corner. One of the things to keep in mind as you're uh, kind of going through this and you can even see from the aerial image that we have pulled up here that this is similar to what you're going to find in this neighborhood. Anybody that has had it, the garages, accessory structures, things of that nature, um, you know, all reach into that, uh, that site setback on almost every property that's had those, those structures added. So uh, as we go through those three statutory criteria that we need to analyze, uh, the first, uh, the reduction in the site setback would pose no imminent threat to the public health, safety, welfare, or morals of the community. Uh, the applicant intended to improve upon the structure that is, that's existed for many years. And while the structure may be in closer uh, proximity to the side, uh, the request is consistent with how other lots in the neighborhood have developed and would not overly impose upon the immediate neighbors. The second criteria is the uh, use and value of the adjacent area. Um, you know, the site setback is compatible with existing development in the area. Uh, many of the properties, like I said, have similar structures that are in similar setback situations. So um, updating the garage and adding the living space would not um, uh, adversely affect in a substantially adverse manner uh, any property values. And then the last criteria, uh, because of the lots and homes in the neighborhood are being relatively small, as we said, uh, the lot is restricted to an irregular configuration. 
Thus, the strict application of the terms of the UDO uh, would result in practical difficulties for somebody to try to fit a required two-car garage addition uh, onto a property in this neighborhood. So with that, uh, the City of Lebanon Planning staff recommends uh, approval of the development standards variance to permit the construction of a garage and home addition that is 3.6 feet from the side of the property line. Happy to answer any questions. I think we're okay. Very good. Would Mr. Uh, Land care to step forward and have anything to say? <clears throat> Hello. Thank you for the uh, permute, our permission to build. Just looking to get a garage so I can actually park inside. <laughs> okay. It is the meeting is open for uh, public comment. If there is any, please step forward. Seeing nobody's going to step forward, we'll close the public end of the meeting. And uh, we'll close the public end of the hearing. Do um, you have anything, Chad? This is a, an addition, not a separate structure, correct? So it would not be subjected to any kind of total square footage restrictions? That's correct. It is an addition. So it's adding a garage and living space. So okay. it will be attached to the property, to the existing structure. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Would they entertain a motion? Make a motion to approve 22-9 as written. Second. Please. Okay. Chad Kiger. Aye. Mark Vanneman. Aye. Bruce Polly. Aye. Ron Edwards. Aye. And Lori Gross. Aye. Motion carries. Good luck. <coughs> Next item is docket 2214. Uh, property is located at 2423, 2425 North Lebanon Street here in Lebanon. Property zone plan business commercial is within the thoroughfare overlay district and is comprised of approximately 6.47 acres. The subject lot configuration is, is 630 feet wide, 450 feet deep. Ben? Good evening, board members. Uh, the application for you here tonight is for a sign variance, and I will pull up a few things here. We'll start off with the site overall. Uh, this is probably a site you guys are all familiar with on North 11th Street. It's the home of Tractor Supply and now Planet Fitness that you see represented here on the aerials. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And for those of you also familiar with the site, know that there is an existing pole sign for tractor supply that's out there now that is actually a non-conforming sign. We do not permit pole signs on properties like this uh, in, the, and in this location. We've been talking with the applicant about updating that signage for the site and he does have plans for additional tenants here. There is additional tenant space in the building and then they're also they're looking at the possibility of maybe uh, creating an outlot on the site as well. So a total of potentially four tenants on this site. And as we're looking at with them and in this, the size requirements that, that uh, are restricted to a multi-tenant, when you're looking at anything more than about three, three tenants, you know, four, five, six tenants, whatever the number would be, the size of each one of the panels for those tenants gets really small pretty quickly uh, based on what we permit. So up the, right now we permit eight, eight foot tall and 32 square feet. So at four tenants, uh, you got each one at eight square feet or probably about two feet tall, two foot tall sign. Uh, given the fact that the speed limit on Lebanon Street out here in this location is 45 miles an hour, it starts getting a little harder to see signs of that size until you get right up on them. Um, I've actually done some research with some of our adjoining neighbors and how they address signs like this, and a lot of them actually allow the sign sizes to get larger as the speed limits increase. So you don't get in a situation where somebody's going 45 miles an hour and all of a sudden they realize that's where Planet Fitness they need to turn right now. So they're not having to slow, you know, quickly slow down and make the turn. Uh, so that's something, ironically, we're getting ready to update our UDO this year, and that's something that is part of what we'll look at the sign size requirements, figure out there's ways that we can actually scale those up as the speed limits get larger to allow for better visibility for those signs for people that are driving on faster streets. Uh, but looking at this with the applicant here, and kind of looking at some of the other signs in the area, many of you are probably also familiar with the, the, the uh, 
multi-tenant sign for the Walmart Center, which is significantly larger than 32 square feet and has multiple tenants on it as well. So looking at how, over time, the city has addressed some of those multi-tenant signages on this street where there's higher speeds, we have allowed for some larger signage out there to make sure that the, the tenant signs are visible. So what we work with in the applicant here was a proposal to uh, replace the existing non-conforming pole sign and this is just a general rendering here that you'll see a four tenant uh, ground mo monument sign that would be slightly taller than the eight feet i believe it's actually uh, 12 feet tall and then also uh, larger than permitted this is actually i believe uh, uh, an 80 square foot sign so a little bit more than twice the size of what we would currently permit uh, in this area. This then allows for a, a, a two by 10 foot sign for each tenant. It gives you a little bit more space, something that's gonna be a little bit better uh, visibility on Lebanon Street for people that are traveling up and down the road. Uh, so again, this would be something that would replace the existing tractor supply pole sign and not be an addition to it there on Lebanon Street. And so, as I mentioned then, this, this would be a variance to allow for uh, sign size and height that is approximately 50% larger than that which is currently permitted in, in, on, in the Plain Business Commercial Zoning District and in Third Fair Overlay District. And uh, to walk through then the findings of fact, those three elements that have to be all be uh, considered in the positive uh, in order to consider a variance request. The first would be that the, uh, the approval will not be injurious to public health, safety, morals, and general welfare. Uh, relief from the sign size and height requirement poses no imminent threat to the public. In fact, the additional size will actually provide better visibility for motor motorists on Lebanon Street at the posted CB limit of 45 miles an hour, which will allow them a better opportunity to slow down and more safely make the turns for the entrance and not with signage, just bet with better visibility. Number two, the use and value of the area adjacent would, included would not be affected in a substantially adverse manner, and we've determined that uh, it would not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. The proposed sign is in a commercial area with a number of signs, both monument and pole signs, that are larger than the current standard. The proposed sign will complement those in the area and is a sign design that conforms with the UDO as opposed to the existing pole sign. And number three, the subtract application of the terms of the UDO will result in practical difficulties. Uh, given the fact that a number of commercial properties in the area have signs that do not conform to the standards, either because of designer size, holding the subject property of the UDO standards will result in a practical difficulty. In addition, given the need for four tenant spaces on the sign and the posted speed limit of 45 miles an hour, the increased size will allow for better visibility for motorists. With that then staff recommendation, uh, we do recommend approval of the development standards variance uh, to permit an increase in the height and size of a multi-tenant shopping center sign subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the existing non-conforming pole sign would be removed <coughs> prior to the installation of the proposed new sign. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Do you have any idea the height of the existing sign? It's taller. It's 21 feet tall. So we'll go from 21 to about, about 12. Okay. I'm trying to think, where where is it on the property exactly? Is it just past the, the entrance? Yeah, so it's, it's south of the entrance, but approximately <laughs> in this location right here. I don't see the shadow necessarily on this, but it's, it's roughly in this area south of the entrance. Okay. And the new sign will go in the same place? It's in roughly the same area. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Ben. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Does anybody have a question for the applicant? No. Just okay. a, a simple poll sign? similar to what's there today or is it any decorative elements to it or um, <coughs> no, actually I purposely on signs try to stay away from decorative elements so that it keeps it to the point and so it's clean cut you need to stand over a little towards the microphone please yeah. thank you try to keep it clean cut just to the point uh, with it so we don't have a lot of extra elements to it um, I think Ben had up the plan that's that's up there so it is just a, it's a ground bearing sign a brick base to it uh, this concrete is, base yeah we didn't propose doing a brick base on this sign doing it out in the parking lot because we're going to reuse so having to keep tractor supply tractor supply needs a sign out there consistently so as this is going right in the same spot the tractor supply signs at 
So the day that their sign comes down, this has to go back up for them. So we really don't have time to do a foundation and footer and all that kind of work to it. The prize are okay with such a small? It's, yeah, so their existing one is uh, 16 feet wide and 5 feet tall, so it's a great reduction. Yeah. They've, They've been, been really good to work with. Uh, Planet Fitness coming in, there's a number of things in the building that we had to do to get them to work together. Uh, you know, Tractor Supply had to give up a little bit to make it look right and work right. And, uh, yeah, they've been on board. They, they love having it. Back in the building, so. Is it illuminated? Can you see it at night? Is it back, backlit? Or? It, it will be, yes. Okay. Yeah. And no uh, no messaging or anything like that? No, the, these will be uh, just the static. Plastic, okay. Plastic panels, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Is it, we'll open it for public comment if anybody cares to step forward and address the sign. Okay, we will close the public end of this and uh, with no further comment, look for a motion. I make a motion to approve the development standard variance request to permit an increase in the height and size of a multi-tenant shopping center sign um, subject to the following condition that the existing non-conforming poles line be removed prior to the installation of the proposed new sign. Second. Okay, Mark Vanneman. Aye. Chad Kiger. Aye. Ron Edwards. Aye. Bruce Polly. Aye. Very gross. Aye. Sorry, I keep going out of order tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Motion carries. Congratulations. Next item is docket 2216. Arco Design, build for Stag Industrial Holdings. The property is located at 121 South Enterprise Boulevard in Lebanon Business Park. The property is zoned planned business industrial and composed of 58.5 acres. Matt. Good evening again, board. Uh, pulling up the side plan here so that you can see. Uh, this one is going to be another familiar uh, request to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, we have a Shet book group, a uh, Shet warehouse out in the business park that is proposing a 160,000 square foot expansion to their existing warehouse. Uh, part of this expansion, as you can see from the image here, so um, the area with the, in the checkers is the uh, 160,000 square feet they'll be adding. Uh, on both sides, they'll be adding additional truck docks, and then they'll also be adding a fire lane around the southern end of the property that wraps around. Uh, and then future parking could be towards the rear of the property. That's something that uh, won't go in initially. But what's before you tonight is a variance application to uh, for relief from the UDO requirement uh, for parking lot perimeter curbing. You see that uh, in most all of our applications that we've seen come through for developments out in the business park is curbs and big semis don't mix well together. Um, in this particular case, we do have the, the fire lane that's out there, but one of the other big concerns with adding uh, parking lot curbing here would be the drainage situation. This site was designed to sheet drain off the property back to the uh, connected drainage uh, uh, ditches and uh, detention ponds. So by in adding uh, or make, making them put up curbing would dramatically change the way the stormwater management is managed on this particular property. So uh, in review of the application, the statutory criteria again, um, the relief from the parking area curb poses no imminent threat to the public health, safety, morals, or general welfare. The uh, applicants proposing again to sheet drain to the adjacent swales and detention facilities that empty into the regulated drains, so there's no drainage issues that will be caused to the neighboring properties. The requested variance for relief from the parking area curbing uh, will not result and or have any effect on the value of adjacent uh, properties in the area. Uh, curb has been provided towards the front. Uh, I, I don't have it on this image, but towards the front of the pop property in the visitor and employee parking area 
where it's visible from the road, they do have curbing, but the remainder of the property where the trucks drive, and the curbing does not exist. So the elimination of the curb for the truck areas is consistent with other uses in the park. And then lastly, the strict application, again, of the UDO would result in practical difficulties uh, because of the storm management of the stormwater being dramatically affected by adding that curbing. Um, the whole site would have to be re-engineered to manage all of that water runoff. So in review of the staff, recommend staff recommendation, the planning and zoning staff does recommend approval of the development standards variance request to permit relief from the parking curb requirements of the unified development ordinance. If anybody has any questions. I think we're good. Is uh, anybody from the tenant available? Hi, my name's Jared Wilkerson. I'm the civil engineer, so happy to answer any questions if you have any. Good. Guess we're good to go. There's a public meeting. I will open the meeting to the public. Anybody care to address this issue? We will close the public end of the meeting and look for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve docket 22-16, granting uh, relief from the UDO section 7.5C.3 curb, curbing requirement for the truck trailer parking area to allow stormwater to sheet drain into the detention facility on the southern lot perimeter. Second. Mark Vanneman? Aye. Chad Kiger? Aye. Bruce Pauley? Aye. Ron Edwards? Aye. Lori Gross? Aye. <coughs> Ocean carries. Congratulations. Next item on the docket is 2217 Adam D. Hart for the Mann Brothers Holding LLC. Property is located at 1003 and 1013 South Lebanon Street in Lebanon. Property is zoned neighborhood business and in the thoroughfare overlay district and comprises a point six two three acres. Ben? All right, thank you, Bruce. Uh, give you a little bit of an overview of this project here. Uh, this is a site if they want to pull up computer that is on South Lebanon Street. It is what I would call an infill site, uh, given the fact that it is essentially developed all the way around it. you got a series of uh, three lots that are here um, that are zoned neighborhood business, uh, which allows for a mix of both residential and commercial uses on the site. Uh, what is being proposed is a small uh, commercial building that they're proposing to house a convenience store and self-serve laundromat on the site. And I'll pull up the site plan here in a second. Uh, the reason for the, the, this for you here tonight is not necessarily a discussion of the use itself. The use that they're proposing is a permitted use within the neighborhood business zoning district. So we're not necessarily here to discuss the validity of the use on the site, but really looking at how to, that this site is the ability to develop, develop the site based on the, the standards that are in place currently on the site. And that is both the setback requirements for the neighborhood business zoning district and also the thoroughfare over overlay district includes an additional buffer yard along Lebanon Street this significantly restricts uh, the developability of the site. Uh, couple that with the fact that to the east, you also have properties on multifamily requiring additional buffer yards there as well. Um, so again, you've got a number of restrictions to the site due to the buffer yard requirements. In addition, three sides of this site are also considered front yards because it has streets on both the northwest and south sides of the property. So when you really look at coupling the setback, the front setback standards with the buffer standards, you end up with a really small OSHA stand piece of the property that you're actually able to develop that is causing you really a challenge to be able to figure out how to develop this property. Um, you look at, you know, in addition, the neighborhood business zoning district is really set up to try to create pedestrian scale uses that are actually where the buildings are closer to the street as opposed to a traditional commercial district where you got buildings that are set back further with parking out front. So the goal here is really to find a way to try to pull the building closer to the street uh, getting, bringing it closer to the sidewalk and putting the parking to the side or behind of that. 
uh, to try to meet the standards as the way they're intended to be applied in the neighborhood business zoning district. And you can kind of see how that's in play here. Uh, the the uh, non-residential uses across the street, you have a church and another non-residential building. They're both uh, within 10 feet of that front property line. Uh, another commercial building down here actually sits on the property line, both corners, and uh, a number of these buildings are a challenge because they're so close to the street. Uh, but you will see that the non-residential buildings that you see in this area are all within 10 feet of the front property line. The way the standard is written for the overlay district and the neighborhood business zoning district, the buffer your front roof yard requirement is 20 feet, and the front setback is a minimum of 15 feet. So we would be asking them to put the building at least 35 feet back from the front property line, or more than three times what the front setback is for any property else that's adjacent to it. Uh, so what we really worked with the applicant here was to find a way to really meet the intent of the buffer standards in terms of plantings and distance, but still allow them some additional flexibility for using this property in a manner as the properties are developing around it. And I'll show you that here in a second. There are three, there are three requests that are before you here tonight. The first is a front building setback. And what we've essentially done here is you can see in the green on the dash lines where those are the buffer yard lines that are required on each of the four property lines. That, this green on the front here represents that 20 foot third floor overlay buffer yard. This building now sits approximately um, 20 and a half feet from the front property line. So technically this building right now is showing a half, a half, a six inch front setback, even though it's uh, more than 20 feet from the front property line. But this, but this building is also set back further than any other property within this, within this area. And what we wanted to do with the app here is make sure that we had a, the buffer yard requirement met in the front yard and the buffer yard plantings will be planted as well, but still allow them some additional flexibility to develop this site, similar sites around them. So we wanted to make sure that we at least had that buffer yard requirement uh, met. The second one is front parking setback. And similar to how the buffer yard standards work as it relates to a front building setback, the parking setback is the same. You add the buffer yard to the front parking setback. So again, when you got addition, other sites, uh, some of these, the parking goes all the way up to that front property line. We would be asking this site to be 25, or to, excuse me, 30 feet from the front property line, uh, or again, more than, more than three times, possibly four times the distance away from the front property line that the adjacent property is being asked to, to place their parking. So what we've again done here is, you see again that 20 foot buffer yard, there are some small portions of the parking lots that extend into that front parking setback. And I believe this one is probably, you know, about five feet from the front as opposed to 10 feet. Uh, so again, we're giving them some flexibility while still meeting that thoroughfare overlay buffer to be able to use some of that front yard similar to what uh, adjoining property owners have been able to enjoy for a number of years. The third one is a rear parking setback. Again, as I had mentioned, there is a, because this adjacent property is on multifamily, there is a 10 foot buffer yard requirement on this east property line plus, again, the, the rear parking setback of five feet. So we'd be asking them to put their parking 15 feet away from that rear property line. And what we've done here is work with them. They're going to provide that 10-foot buffer yard, and they're actually going to provide both a privacy fence along this parking area and the buffer planting requirements within this 10-foot buffer yard. And uh, in exchange, that would allow them to put the parking 10 feet from the property line as opposed to 15 feet. So those are the three variances before you here tonight, is uh, um, allowing them to put the building in 20 and a half feet from the front property line as opposed to, to 35. Uh, the parking at approximately 23 feet from the property line as opposed to 30, and allow their, their rear parking to be 10 feet from the property line as opposed to 15. And again, this doesn't show the, the, the entire development of the site. This gives you just the building and the parking area they're proposing. They still are going to come up with a landscape plan that meets all the landscaping requirements, so the buffer yards, parking lot perimeter requirements, building-based landscaping. Those are all things that are still to come. Certainly the design of the building, we're going to take a close look at that because a thoroughfare overlay has elevated standards for architecture. So those are things that are still coming when they file for plan commission for the development plan approval. Uh, what they wanted to do here tonight is get an understanding from the Board of Zoning Appeals if there's going to be support for these variations from the setback requirements before they went to the effort to fully develop their site plan uh, for the development plan submittal. So that'll be something be coming later uh, with the plan commission. Uh, so again, uh, the, uh, there are three statutory requirements for each one of these uh, three variance requests. And out of concern for time, I won't read all of them, but I will make a note of them for the record that they are in the staff report. And I will go through each of the recommendations individually because one does have a condition. So in the case of the first, let me find my page here, the first request which would be for front building setback, and that would be to allow the front building setback to be 
20 and a half feet from Lebanon Street rather than the required minimum of 35. We have recommended approval of that variance to permit relief from the <coughs> setback requirement of the neighborhood business funding district. The second is the front parking setback, which will allow the parking to be approximately 20 feet from Lebanon Street rather than the required 30 feet. And we have recommended approval of that development standards variance request to permit relief from the front parking setback requirement. And the third is the rear parking setback on the east property line, allowing for a 10 and a half foot setback as opposed to the required 15 feet. With that, the Lebanon planning staff has recommended approval of that development standards variance request to permit relief from the rear parking setback subject to the following requirement. And that would be that the applicant would install a six foot tall privacy fence along the edge of the parking lot adjacent to the east property boundary in addition to the required buffered plantings. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I think we're good for now. Okay. Would the applicant care to add anything? Good evening. My name is Adam Dehart. I'm project manager for Keeler Webb Associates. Our offices are located at 486 Gradle Drive, Carmel, Indiana, 46032. This particular project is uh, presented to you, will be uh, owned and maintained by Mann Brothers Holdings. Uh, they operate friendly markets in Indiana. Uh, currently they have 17 of these facilities scattered throughout the uh, northern counties of Indiana, uh, as far north as Monticello, as far as east as Gas City, uh, Frankfurt, Lafayette is where their facilities are. Some of the facilities they've taken over were old, dilapidated uh, village pantry buildings, and they've updated them, uh, brought them up to a current standard, and then maintained them as a clean, efficient operating convenience store. Uh, some, of the, some of the convenience stores they operate do have a gas station associated with them. This particular uh, location, after meeting with the staff and looking at the size and shape of the property, as you can see, is awful small. It just didn't work out well with uh, gas pumps also and still be able to try to take care of all the site amenities that are required plus underground detention. So um, the other item that they uh, have on some of their uh, facilities is uh, self-service laundry. There is a need for that still. Not everybody's got a washer and dryer at home. Uh, and as we know, they're pretty expensive to take care of, operate, and own. So uh, there is a certain amount of the community that does need that type of facility and they operate that as an ancillary part of their business in this facility. Um, so this particular facility that they're looking at based on their market research would work out well for a convenience store and a uh, laundry facility. Um, we've tried to design the site and made the accommodations for both of those uses in, in this particular facility. As Ben said, this is a, uh, this is a neighborhood business zone. Uh, the use is allowed in this zoning classification. And the site plan that we've presented to you, can I get that to pop up on the screen? Great. The, uh, the site that we're presenting to you today is something that's been an iteration over time. Uh, we've met with staff and submitted, I believe this was our third site plan to staff, uh, trying to work around uh, the different portions of the ordinance in relation to the neighborhood business, the buffer yard requirements that we were trying to fit in and work around all three uh, front yards on this particular site, which is not easy. And in fact, in some ways, in some communities, they would consider it four sides because they would consider an alley being a front yard, but here nor there, um, we're restricted on that. The overall acreage on this particular site is uh, 0.6 acres. One thing I want to call your attention to on the site plan, there is a red dashed line that runs through the parking lot and the building. Kind of outline it with the arrow here. If this site complied, if this site was to comply explicitly to every regulation regarding building and parking setback, and, the, and all the uh, required thoroughfare buffer yard plantings, that's the only area we could have any parking or any building at all. It ends up being such a small area that the site would be virtually unusable 
Um, for instance, you know, we can't operate a convenience store in a thousand or fifteen hundred square feet. It just doesn't work. Um, commercial buildings need two ways of access. The fire department generally requires that so they can get in and out of the facility. Um, obviously, since this building is, does front on State Road 39 and we are looking to have a curb cut on State Road 39, we all we uh, have addressed and started entering into talks with NDOT on a preliminary design basis to take a look at how our entrance works with the, with the area. Um, it's highly probable that that uh, entrance will have a slight redesign in the future that will get worked out in the site development plan approval process, but it will more than likely be a right in and right out to help alleviate uh, turning movements and eliminate any left hand turning movements in the area. And then we've taken a lot of consideration and tried to work out our parking on uh, getting in and out of this facility. And then additionally, we've tried to accommodate the uh, walk up and pedestrian access. Uh, our site plan will include brand new sidewalks on Noble Street, which are not present on the north side of the street at this point in time. They've been there in the past, but they've long drawn over and, and uh, not been maintained as a true sidewalk. Uh, we're going to reconstruct those. We're going to have our interior uh, sidewalks connect to those, and we will also have a sidewalk that we will be installing on Ash Street so that this will be literally a friendly market that the pedestrians can walk up to also. With that, I'll reserve any additional time that I may have left over for any rebuttal comments and would be here for any questions you gentlemen might have. Oh, lastly, uh, a couple other little things. I'm sorry. Um, we do concur with the staff's uh, findings on the uh, findings of fact in their staff report. Uh, we agree with their um, their uh, review of the of the site and, and their findings on that, and we have no problem with the additional condition that they've requested regarding that fence. That was something that we came up with. We want to be a good neighbor. Uh, in fact, we're putting the fence on the parking lot side so the landscaping can be on the residential side so it will look really nice and we don't have any issue with uh, cars, car lights or anything like that shining in anybody's homes. With that, I'd be available for any questions you might have. I don't think we have any at the present time. Thank you. Uh, it is a public meeting and once again, anybody that wants to speak needs to sign in at Kelly's desk up here. Uh, try and limit your time to three minutes and try not to repeat what somebody else has said. So we will open it to the public. So who's first? Council. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to this docket number 22-17. My name is Morris Jones. I'm the pastor of the Lebanon Wesleyan Church located directly across from the property uh, at 1004 South Lebanon Street. Full disclosure to this board, I currently am serving as a member of the City Council, but in this capacity tonight, I'm only speaking and my remarks will come from me being the pastor of the church. I'm speaking on behalf of several people, and in light of what you had mentioned about keeping it short and not repeating, uh, I'm representing tonight uh, 29 individuals who have signed uh, to uh, test the fact that they would like me to speak on their behalf so we don't become repetitious. I have those here if you would like. And uh, anyone who has signed this document and asked that I speak on behalf, would you please stand? Very much. I would ask the board consideration to speak longer than three minutes. Not very much longer. I would need about 15 minutes. I'll give you five. Okay. Uh, 
Mr. Polly, we, we allow in the, the rules of procedure up to 10 minutes total for remonstrance. I don't know if there are others that are wishing to speak on this item other than Mr. Jones. Is, I, if there's no others that are interested in speaking and Mr. Jones is representing every, I would offer maybe to allow him the full 10 minutes for the remonstrance. Thank you very much. <coughs> I'd like to present to the board a, a, a different uh, approach to uh, this particular uh, situation that's before us. Already uh, the petitioner has said that this has problems with uh, trying to make it work and uh, we would like to also uh, uh, bring up some issues that we see as, as important. Um, I would like to bring up the issues of when the uh, criteria that is listed in the uh, staff's study, it talks about um, issues of the requirement of statutory one, uh, approval that would not be injurious to public health safety and the general welfare. I'd like to speak to the safety and general welfare issue because of what this particular site, location, not the property itself, but the location presents to this particular neighborhood. Um, ben, would I be able to have the picture of the site? We stipulate that the uh, data that is used to come up with this, the city uses and everything is correct. We have no issue with that. We're just submitting some extra data that would be important. It falls in line with what we call qualitative data. I also have a PhD from Purdue and I have research ability to understand qualitative data. And the method that I would be using to present this would be something called phenomenology, which means what does a real lived experience translate into when it comes to understanding. So that's a particular location. If you look to uh, the north, uh, the Ash Street intersections, they're offset. So they do not provide an easy flow back and forth. This causes hesitation, wide turns on a regular basis, which anyone in this room can attest that happens over and over again. You'll also notice that Lebanon Street is at a slight angle, which makes the turning north and south, depending on which side of that road it is, have to have a larger arc, which causes hesitation and the traffic problem in that particular area. Also, you'll notice that when we're looking at particular things such as visibility, uh, when you have those angles and you have a particular property that will have a, a cutout, when that person, when that car is sitting in that cutout, the visibility is cut short. You can't see beyond the car because it's literally about 85 feet away from that corner what would be called Noble Street to the south. So there's some issues with that particular area. Also, we would uh, like to point out that there are other concerns that deal with safety. What we find is that particularly in that area, due to the traffic issues, there's unintended consequences. So uh, our church location is on to the left, across the street there, and right next to that would be the A&K Monument Company. What happens, and we've noticed through the years, is that when traffic gets staggered, either the Noble or the Ash Street entrances, going through that as a thoroughfare, they back up and they come across the parking lots behind, so they use our parking lot as a way to get around the mess that is presented in the street. And what we have decided, and through our, our particular research, is that if you would give that particular uh, uh, thoroughfare there behind our church is what it's become, even 10 cars a day in a year's time, that's 3,600 cars that go through there. Uh, myself and those who have uh, uh, employment in the, uh, the Monument Company on several occasions have stepped out of our doors and almost became hit with cars rushing through. And typically what they're trying to do is they're coming through to Noble. And then if you would go south of Noble is the location of the Dollar General, which is another convenience type store using the same retail license. So they're bypassing this area altogether and again causing congestion. So that's like the if and then statement. If this is happening here, then there is a result from that. And uh, when we're looking at the, the uh, qualitative research is that we would try to investigate and say, what, what is your experience? The data shows this is a thoroughfare that's open and free, which it is. However, those intersections cause us some problems. So for our particular neighborhood, that is a grave concern to us. 
it does present and address the criteria listed in the that staff report, which talks about safety and general welfare of the <clears> community. <throat> I have one letter I'd like to read that I think would also add to the idea of our um, understanding or the understanding of the real lived experience. This is from the A&K Custom Monument Service. Aaron, you'd like to stand right there's Aaron. He's the owner. This was uh, presented to the zoning board. I did not get a chance to get to the board earlier, but it says this. Uh, my name is Kelly Bass, and I manage the showroom at the A&K Custom Monument Service at 1024 South Lebanon. We have concerns over how the proposed convenience store design might affect public safety. And having been with a &K since 2011, I have regularly seen how busy the intersection is at Noble and Lebanon Streets. There used to be a yellow blinking light. For some reason, it is removed. That was some help. Presently, there are a lot of road rage instances at that location, meaning because people are, are, are very frustrated with that layout, road rage happens. And so she was able to say, on many occasions, you hear extremely impatient people. They're yelling, they're honking because of how hard it is to cross the street. There's been accidents in front of there from uh, fender benders to uh, impacting the buildings close by. There are also folks in wheelchairs in the area that have an almost impossible time of crossing the road. And, they, and she says, I personally went out to help them cross. That's a good neighbor in a very difficult situation. So I would stipulate that the petitioner has a very difficult time putting their plans and making it work on this particular location. But we likewise have a difficult situation. And adding one more in and out in that area which is highly congested cannot add to the welfare or the safety of the community. Thank you very much. We would be opposed, I guess, in that regard. Do you have any questions for me? for him, Ben. I have one for Ben. Any questions for... Good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ben? Oh, uh, okay. Is there anybody else that cares to speak real quick? <clears throat> we'll close the public end of the meeting and Ben Mark has a question. So when it comes to what he just talked about, is, is was there traffic studies done, or is there's, I mean, re light requirements I mean, when you have that many intersections in and out around an area? Right. Uh, so so no. Uh, I mean, for a project of this scale, we would typically require a traffic study. Um, the other challenge here is that it's not our road. Lebanon Street's not our road. So mm -hmm. um, even even if we had specific things that come up, it, we would have to rely on INDOT to implement them. Um, I know that the applicant has already started talking with NDOT about their entrance on Lebanon Street, and he had implied that there may be some changes to restrict it to just right in, right out, but NDOT's going to determine that. In terms of local requirements for that cut, we require it to be 75 feet a, a, a away from the nearest adjacent intersection, and it meets those requirements. So in terms of our local standards for a cut out there, they have met the requirements. Um, so, so typically we would not require a traffic study for something of this scale. Uh, if it was a large 90 acre retail development, we would because we'd be looking at uh, whether additional turn lanes would be required or anything like that. So, and just to kind of go back and address the comments, uh, we are certainly very sensitive and understand their concerns as it relates to safety and traffic. I, I, I would offer to you that their concerns aren't necessarily related to the variance requests that are being made. Uh, the fact that they're asking for a 20-foot setback rather than 35-foot setback are not causing traffic issues. It's the use itself that's going to generate traffic. As I've already suggested, the use itself is permitted. It is a permitted use within this area, both the convenience store and the self-serve laundromat or whatever those uses are proposing there. So the use itself is permitted. Uh, what we're looking at here tonight is if is the, the, the lot itself being restricted and the additional standards in terms of buffers creating undue hardship to this to being able to develop this property for any permitted use 
Uh, this, those same standards would apply if somebody were going to put three houses there, they'd be required to be three times further away from the street than any other house that's on that block. So that's really what you look at in terms of an unnecessary hardship. Is this property itself, is there some sort of hardship that's being created by the standards that's in place and they're, they're being held to a unique standard that the properties around it are not being held to? And as I'd suggested before, you, know, you look at those other properties out there, the farthest away from the street any of those other properties are is 10 feet. And this is being held to a standard that's more than three times that. So again, I understand, I understand and totally appreciate their concerns about safety out here. Something that that street probably needs to be looked at on a larger scale to figure out Lebanon Street in the future, because I don't think the traffic counts are going to go up necessarily a lot because of this use, but they're just going to go up more and more time because the community is changing. And so we, we, this is something that over time we're going to have to look at in the long term anyway, figuring out intersections, how Lebanon Street works. But right now, it's a, again, it's a state road, so we have limited ability right now to make changes locally, but working with state to make sure that everything's safe out there is certainly something we want to do. If there are any other questions, I'd be happy to. On the, on the entrance and exit, is there any way just to have, when, they, when you go out exiting the business, like a right turn only, or? Yeah, and, and again, as I said, the state's going dictate, to that, dictate that for the most part. We don't necessarily, from with our local standards, have the ability to dictate that, to require that necessarily. Um, but uh, it's certainly something that, at least not the Board of Zoning Appeals, wouldn't have the ability to do that. Right. Because again, we're not, right. we're not addressing a variance related to that cut. Uh, we're only addressing setbacks related to building and parking so we can establish conditions that make sense based on what's being requested tonight. The Planning Commission, however, when they look at the development plan, could say, we really think that this needs to be right in, right out. They have the ability to place that condition on a development plan approval. Um, but again, the state's also going to dictate those things as well. And we're going to work with the state to make sure that this works, this works correctly. I, have, I need some clarification on something. So our number one criteria is that it will not be injurious to the public health, safety, morals, general welfare. Yes. But we're not doing a traffic study what i would suggest to you there is that the setback would not be injurious to public health safety not the use for a, for a building setback not they're not asking for a use variance to allow use that's not permitted <coughs> so that 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 injurious comment is related to the setback specifically that they're requesting okay thanks so thank you Does, would the applicant uh, care to come back up and for a rebuttal? Yes, sir. I'll keep this brief. Um, as I said, we've worked with the city, talked to the city engineer about access to and from this site. Being the type of use this is, it's extraordinarily important that we get this right. You know. We want the facilities to succeed. We want to be a good neighbor. We want it to be safe so people can come and go from the store. Um, we, I've met dot out on the site for an initial inspection of the curb cut. Um, I talked to them on the phone today. Um, they have talked with the city engineer in certain manners about Noble Street and the intersection there at 39. All of us in the engineering side of it are aware of these concerns and trying to come up with the absolute best plan. What I can assure you is that because we're asking for a curb cut on State Road 39, in order to get a permit for that curb cut, it will be thoroughly vetted. There will be traffic studies. There will be drainage looked at. The sidewalks will be looked at. Our plan calls for an improved sidewalk along State Road 39 to repair the sidewalk that's in poor condition and add two new uh, ADA ramps that should make it safer for everybody to, to uh, ambulate or roll across the sidewalk area there. But I can assure you, even though that is not what we're asking for here this evening as far as that curb cut is concerned, I can assure you it will be designed and permitted in accordance with NDOT requirements. And those requirements take safety of the most concern for everybody involved. They also at times look to the future on how the development or future right-of-way might be taken for along uh, 
State Road 39 and Lebanon Street at this location and or improvements to the Noble Street intersection. And we're going to be working hand in hand with NDOT to make sure that whatever we're doing on our property fits with all that so that it can all be as safe and efficient as possible. Is there enough room uh, coming in or out of that property to keep the traffic from stacking? So if, if I'm turning into the lot here and I'm waiting, so let's say somebody's backing out of a space, um, does that provide enough room there to keep a car from stopping in the middle of the Lebanon Street and, and f flowing over into, into the northbound lane? Now are you talking about a, a right in, right out scenario or yeah. a left hand turning? Movement? Right in, right out. A vehicle's going to slow and turn right in? Um, How much space from from 39 to where we're to the first parking space? Is that 20 feet? Uh, from the actual pavement, from curb line to curb line, it's actually closer to about 30, 35 feet. Okay. To that front space right there? Yes, sir. Okay. In, in all locations, you might see around the four corners of the site, there's, uh, there's diagonal lines at the triangles corner of the site that we've already shown on this site plan, these diagonal lines, those are all site clearance areas. And we've shown that in conjunction with our plan on the thoroughfare and the plannings that we're going to have to design our plannings to maintain those site triangle areas. Um, most of your radius takes up your site triangle area for any entrances you have, but that will all be taken into consideration, reviewed and approved by NDOT. Thank you. Any other discussion? Entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, three development standard variances for uh, the property that have been presented to us tonight and um, subject to the following requirement that the applicant installs a six foot tall privacy fence along the edge of the parking lot adjacent to the east property boundary in addition to the required buffer planning. Second. Everyone second? I'll second. Mark Vanneman? Aye. Ed Kiger? No. Bruce Polly? Aye. Ron Edwards? Aye. Lori Gross? Aye. Motion carries. Next item on the docket is master Mr. belt construction. Mr. Polly, just real quick. Uh, yes. For those in the audience here, that is, this is not the last approval that this project is going to need. Um, it will have to come back in for development plan approval with the plan commission. They have not filed that yet, so there will be an additional opportunity to review the site plan, and uh, those notices will go out again when that when that application is in. So that there is there is additional steps before this is approved for construction. So I just want to make sure you guys are all aware of that, and those notices will go out at the time that they file. Could I add one thing that we're just voting on the three items tonight? We're not voting three, on anything yeah, you're else. Not, you're not approving the site plan. Correct. You're not approving what they're specifically showing. It's just related to those three setback variances. Thank you. Okay, master belt construction, <clears throat> Betty Amos. The property is located at 940 Spencer Avenue in Lebanon. Property is zoned neighborhood business and comprised of approximately 1.57 acres. The subject lot configuration, 96 feet wide, 693 feet in depth. Matt. All right, let me get this uh, site pulled out for you. This one is uh, a little bit different than, than what we've experienced in the past. So what we have is uh, the property is located on Spencer Avenue, uh, which you guys are familiar with. That's the uh, angled stretch that connects uh, Indianapolis Avenue 
to State Road 32 uh, over there on the east side of town. Um, we have a, a parcel there that had an existing garage that sat uh, at five feet from the property line on the eastern side of the property. And let me see if I can zoom in and I think our the aerials show. So, mind you, the, uh, the property lines aren't exact on the aerial photos just because of the angle of the airplanes as they fly over. But you can see here there was an existing garage that sat uh, on the right side of the, the property that was five feet from the property line. The property owner uh, demolished that structure and submitted plans to a, add an addition to the property, approximately about 1,400 square foot addition. That was a two-story, two-car garage addition. So the, the applicant submitted the, the application and submitted plans that showed that they intended to meet the seven and a half foot side setback. So throughout the process, uh, planning staff inspectors do go out and, and inspect various, uh, various stages of the construction process. Uh, to make sure that they're in compliance with building code and things of that nature. Uh, where possible, they would also verify that the structure meets the applicable setbacks. In this particular case, uh, we're dealing with, with what is a rural property within city limits where uh, corner markers aren't easily identified and uh, markable, so the proximity to that property line could not be easily determined by, by visual proof. So um, it was when it was close to completion that the, the building was completed that we received a, a call from a neighbor, an adjoining property owner, with concerns that it was too close. At that time, we informed the, the contractor, the property owner, that a site survey would be required uh, to identify exactly where that sat. Uh, when that survey came back, it was identified that the new structure um, presently sat at approximately 4.7 feet from that eastern side property line. Uh, once we, we've uh, received that determination from that official engineering site survey, uh, there are a couple options now. One is to uh, modify the structure so that it would meet the seven and a half foot side setback. We're talking about a 1,400 square foot addition, two story, two car garage. You can't just pick it up and move it. That would be rather onerous uh, for the city to require that of the property owner. So what we offered was for them to uh, seek an alternative, which is a variance for relief from the side setback. So we currently have an existing structure that is non-conforming, um, that uh, the site plans, again, when at the applica application was submitted, the building plans did show a seven and a half foot setback, but for whatever reason, uh, throughout the process, did not beat those. So the application before you, again, is to uh, provide relief from the side setback variance of seven and a half feet. Uh, the statutory criteria, uh, as we've been doing, going through all night, uh, the reduction in the side setback uh, does not pose any <coughs> threat to the public health, safety, or morals or general welfare of the community. The uh, applicant approved, improved the structure that had existed for many years. And while the new structure is in closer proximity to the side property line, the request is consistent with how other lots in the area have been developed. It would not overly impose upon the immediate neighbors uh, whose home, and let me pull out a little bit, the, oh, I can't even scroll out enough, the neighbor property owner's home to the east is just about 200 feet away from the new structure. So uh, there would not be an imminent uh, adverse effect on that neighboring property owner. The second criteria, the requested variance on the site setback is compatible with the existing development in the area. You can see to the property to the west, uh, we have uh, structures that do tend to lean towards those side property lines. Uh, the, many of the properties in the area, see again, contain primary structures and garages with setbacks consistent with this applicant's request. The updated garage and home addition on the property will effectively add value to the immediate property and area and would not adversely affect the use of the adjacent properties. In addition, the garage will place an existing non-conforming garage that was in a similar location to where this current structure sits. And then lastly, uh, the newly constructed addition is currently a non-conforming structure in its current set setback from the property line. Uh, the variance is needed because asking the property owner to tear down the structure to rebuild it less than three feet from its current location uh, would present an undue hardship on that property owner. Uh, so the strict application of the terms of the UDO uh, would create a practical difficulty for that property owner. 
So through thorough review uh, in this unique situation, the City of Lebanon Planning Staff does recommend approval of the Development Standard Variance Request to permit the existing garage and home addition uh, that is 4.7 feet from the side property line. And I'm sure you have questions. Yeah, so Matt, the, the building that was demolished, I think was on that aerial, right? Yes. <laughs> Again, Based on those parcel lines that were drawn, it looked like it was built on the eastern adjacent property almost completely. Yeah, and again, the, the, the aerials that are provided, um, airplanes fly over the city and take images, depending on the angle that the photo was taken, these, these aren't exact property lines. These, okay. are, these are estimated, and again, this is obviously off because the garage that you see in the middle of the screen there wasn't five feet from the property line. Right. Okay. So, that was confusing. Yeah, so it is, this, this image is misleading. It's the best image that we can present to you to uh, kind of explain what's going on and give you a, a And just overall to view. confirm that building is no longer there. Correct. Okay. That, that structure has been demolished and a new attached uh, two-story, two-car garage structure has been added to the property. Thanks. Thank you. Is a public meeting. Uh, oh, got to go with the applicant first. Is that, would the applicant care to step forward and say anything? I live at 940 Spencer Avenue. Um, the property that I have, I purchased 17 years ago. Um, my grandfather has owned that property since he moved, since he came back from World War I. Um, we did demolish the existing structure, which was actually closer to the other property than what the addition is. Um, we created something that is improving the value of all of the homes on that street. And throughout the build, both neighbors, including the one complaint, the complainant, um, came by and viewed every step of the progress and said, this looks great. At no point during that time was I inclined to even believe that an encroachment then would be filed. Um, you know, when COVID hit, we decided we needed more space. So all we're trying to do is provide a bigger home to for our children and a happy environment for them to live in. So thank you for considering this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will open it for public comment. Anybody? Yes, please come forward. Hi, I'm David Ward. I represent Sue C Cooper, who is the neighbor of the lady that just stepped forward and spoke to you. She's resided at that property for 31 years. Her and her husband lived there together until he passed away. There is family relation there, <clears throat> but he has passed away. So the existing structure that they're talking about, the garage, was torn down, and that is true. But there has been no conversation in a neighborly fashion to approach Sue Cooper, who resides at 950 South Spencer, in regards to the construction of this new building. Whether or not it adds value to that property is not to be determined by the person constructing it. It's by the people in the neighborhood that live around it. It obstructs the view from the front of her house her house was constructed in 1991 by contract. It was not a modular house that was shipped in on trailers. It's a well-built structure. Anyone that goes along there for 32 is will understand it when they see the property. And as far as the value of the property is concerned, it's impeded upon, it's obstructing the sideline all the way to the street itself because of that. Had she been approached with 
let's say, pictures or blueprints or anything like that, there might have been a conversation that led to some, you know, compromise in the design of that structure. But that opportunity was never provided to her. They blatantly built this building, which is within seven and a half inches of the seven and a half feet of that setback. It encroaches upon her property. And during the whole course of the construction of this over the last year, there's been debris spread across the front of her property and a number of things that anyone that's been associated with her will stand behind and tell you. Um, with the, the survey that has been conducted as of late and has been done twice by her since she's lived on that property in 31 years, clearly demonstrates that the line that he, that he presents here on this property is in no way, shape, or form representative of where the construction of this house is. And the old garage is there. You can see that yellow line. The fence line is so close to even to that old garage itself. All of that may be grandfathered in, but it's not within that seven and a half foot setback. I'm sure as city council people, you understand there are certain orders and there are certain setbacks placed there for a reason. And if you want to build something on your property, people, zoning boards and stuff, are elected to represent the citizens in a manner that's succinct that that doesn't happen. Her house sits far off of that road, much further than theirs does. And her site has been obstructed She's been violated as far as being contacted and included in any conversations. Um, and the survey that she just recently paid for is staked out and well demonstrated. So now we have a structure that sits inside the setback that was clearly set for many years, 14 years before this person ever resided on that property. And I would say that there's probably some conversation in regards to now an existing structure that really wasn't legally built. So I don't know what the answer is to that, but I think that there have been, it should have been better planning and uh, a little bit of consideration for the person that lived in the property south of her for 31 years. So. What you do with that information, I gather, is <laughs> you know what you think is fair and reasonable, but I don't think <coughs> it's allowed fair and reasonable to start with. So that's what I have. Who are you representing? Sue Cooper. She's sitting right there. Are you a le legal represent representative? I am representing her. I'm speaking for her because okay. she. I'm not, I'm not a legal yes, representative. Her, her son and I were best friends in high school. Yes. You know, so I'm 60 years old. He lives north of London now, but she's like my second mom, and I take care of her because I love her, and I Very just good. want things to be done right by her. And she's a reasonable woman, and that's all I'm here to do. So that, I didn't mean to upset anyone. But okay, thank you. It is the truth. Thank you. Anybody else? Care to step forward? Can you come up to the? I know it's a hassle, but Pull that down so they can hear. There you go. Uh, I need that. This needs to be addressed. When you tear down an ex existing building, it's required that you get a survey. That never happened. The survey was done after all of the construction. We wouldn't be here if that had been done. Someone needs to take a, be accountable for that. And that's where I come in, and I've just got a real problem with it. Thank you. For the record, can we have your name again, ma'am? 
Thank you. Anybody else care to address the board? Okay, we'll close the public end of the meeting. Uh, as far as did just a couple quick things. We, we do not require a survey as part of a construction project, certainly not part of a demolition project. So um, there are certain cases where we do require a survey, but it's not universally required on all construction projects. Um, certainly on a property that's this size, uh, we typically would not. Um, and part of the challenge here in terms of doing inspections to make sure it meets seven and a half feet is the property corners are about 70, 700 feet. The distance is about 700 feet from property corner to property corner. So even if they were marked, it would be a little bit of a challenge to be able to figure out if it was seven and a half feet or five feet. It's a little, a little bit of a challenge with the equipment we have to be able to determine uh, whether whether it, it actually meets the setback. So they did provide us a site plan at the time of construction that showed that it was going to meet the seven and a half foot setback. Um, again, we, we, we don't know why it doesn't meet seven and a half feet based on the, they actually even modified the size of the structure to make sure it would be seven and a half feet. Um, so we did, we did go through all those steps to make sure that based on the construction that it would meet the seven and a half foot setback. It, it obviously does not. We did get a survey after the fact to just verify those things and find out that it was less than seven and a half feet. So we're in a situation now where we've got a structure that's non-conforming um, based on an issue that we can't identify. Um, so now we're in a situation now where one of two things happens, they either tear it down um, or we offer a variance to allow it to remain in its current spot. So was was the plan modified from at all? What's what the as built today? Was it modified from the original permitted plan? Uh, you'd have to ask the yeah, applicant that. I don't. I don't know whether in the field they modified it. I, I know originally it was to be two. It was to about two or three feet wider. They did reduce the size in order to meet the setback originally. Now, in terms of in the field, whether it changed again, I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah, I guess that's what I was asking. If yeah, if they the applicant may be able to address that. So, a couple of things. Um, all plans were shown to both neighbors prior to building. Um, and then when we submitted our plan, our site plan to the city for permits, we were actually told we had to reduce the structure on that side of the house by two feet. So, we reduced that structure by two feet and made the rooms that are upstairs two feet smaller. But you, okay, but from what was approved, you didn't go back and alter it to make it bigger? From what was approved by the city, we did not. Okay, that's no. what I was asking. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Good, thank you. Okay, uh, you need a motion. make a motion to approve docket 22-18 as written I'll second Kelly Mark Vanneman aye Chad Kiger aye Bruce Polly aye Ron Edwards aye Lori Gross aye motion carries last item tonight <coughs> excuse me Docket 2219, Adam Mears for the Sunbrook Development LLC. Property is located at 955 Sunchaser Road, Lot 4 in Lebanon. Property is owned planned unit development, planned unit development and comprised of approximately 0.14 acres. The subject lot configuration is 49.79 feet wide. 119 feet deep. All right, to cap off our evening, we've got another unique situation here. I'll let the applicant kind of explain that when he gets up here in a second. Uh, but we did get contacted by the developer for Sunbrook, and they indicated they were going back through and looking at their plat for Section 1, which, as you know, is well underway in terms of development. There are a handful of lots, one through four, here right by the entrance that haven't been developed yet. 
And I was contacted by the applicant. He said, we just went back and looked at our plat. And it looks like lot four is only 49.79 feet wide rather than required 50 feet, which means our setback isn't going to meet the five foot requirement either. And so they, they weren't sure exactly what happened or how that didn't get caught. But my guess is if they pull this up, lot four is on just a slight curve here. And my guess is if you me measure the distance from property line to property line on the curve, it's probably 50 feet. And my guess is that's what the civil engineer calculated when he calculated the width of that. But effectively, because the property lines are parallel, the distance between the two property lines is only 49.79 feet. So I think there was an error the civil engineer made looking at this, and he actually calculated the lot width based on the, the front property line, which is on a curve, which adds distance as opposed to just a straight line between two properties. So effectively here we've got an undeveloped lot in a neighborhood that is about two and a half inches uh, too short in terms of width. So uh, again, in talking to the applicant because the lots adjacent to it have developed, lot five has already got a house on it, there's really no easy way to try to give this property two and a half inches without totally changing uh, everything else that go is going on here. Um, so what we offered to them was it made most sense to just go ahead and get the variance to allow the, the, a variance of two and a half inches, essentially, which will be totally unnoticeable out there once the houses are built, uh, rather than trying to totally change the plat for section one. So again, another unique situation for us here tonight where, where an error was made by the civil engineers. They were calculating those lot widths because they calculated based on the curve as opposed to a straight line between property lines. And so what they're asking for here tonight is a variance from the lot width and, and side setback requirements to allow a 49.79 foot lot rather than 50 feet and a 4.79 foot side setback rather than five feet, which represents about two and a half inches. So again, I won't read through the three criteria in the staff report, uh, but uh, we'll just name that those are, and those are here in the staff report for the record. And then planning staff recommends approval of the development standards variance request to permit a reduction in the lot width to 49.79 feet and a side setback to 4.79 feet. Happy answering questions. I think we're good, Ben. The applicant care to address the board. Good evening. I'm trying to be very, very brief. We're talking about I think probably the width of the top of my phone. Um, we we uh, hired uh, an engineer um, that uh, clearly was not equipped to do this job. We've since switched engineers to the other sections. Uh, as part of this uh, engineering snafu, we lost nine lots due to faulty engineering. So. Uh, this would be the 10th lot if we were not able to get this variance. Um, again, I would challenge anybody to drive by and be able to notice the difference. I don't I think it's not noticeable, but uh, I kind of laughed uh, with Ben and Matt when I got here saying, I don't know nobody would have ever known if we just went and built the house. And I think to the wiser, nobody would have ever known. But clearly, uh, I would have to sleep with myself knowing that uh, we broke something by two inches. So uh, happy to be here and ask for this. This should hopefully be the easiest. Uh, variants in front of you tonight. I'm so glad I got to wait an hour and a half to do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll open it one last time to the public. Is a public meeting. Okay, we'll close the public meeting. And does the board have any questions for anybody? That being said, for a motion make a motion to approve docket 22-19 as written second motion is second kelly mark vandeman aye chad kiger aye. bruce polly aye ron edwards aye Lori gross aye motion carries congratulations thank you i'm going to come out there tonight and check and or tomorrow when yeah. it's daylight and bring your, bring your phone just i will <laughs> Okay, do we have any other business? Okay, uh, get ready to adjourn the meeting, but before we do that, the next zoning meeting will be Monday, April the 4th. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>